Hi, this is a demonstration of the Field Shield product used within IRI's workbench, which is an Eclipse plugin. The first thing you do when you unpack the workbench is to create a project. In this case, I've already done it. It's overview demo. Um, I will be working with um, a database table called Patient Info. Um, you can use DTP, which is a provided plugin, to uh, view your tables and to edit them. In this case, I'm going to show you what's inside of uh, patient info. A number of columns, as you can see here. Um, for the purposes of this demo, I will be applying a couple uh, functions that are reversible and some protection functions that are not. Um, in order to create a field shield job, you simply go to the directory in which you would like to store your job script and you click on the field shield icon and say new protect job. I will call this the overview job. Um, in this case it's a FCL file name extension because it's field shield. Uh, now we add our data source which can be multiple data sources if you have similarly formatted source data. In this case it's a database table. So you click browse and as you can see I can click my SQL which is one of the several DSNs that I've already got connected in advance. And when I do that, all the tables in that particular DSN connection come up and I'll be using patient info as my source. The next thing you do, you click OK. I can either add another data source or I can assign metadata to this, which is basically a description of the columns and where they reside within the table and maybe the opportunity to remove one or more columns from being processed. So I click Discover Metadata, and um, I'd like to store my metadata in my metadata folder, just for organizational reasons. This will be my patient info metadata. Click Next. Um, it knows that it's from a DSN automatically and that it's a table. And as you can see, all of the columns that comprise the table are shown above with the proposed uh, field format for field shield processing down here. These are field shield supported data types. Um, at this point, I can remove one or more columns from being processed, but I don't want to do that. I can also change the data type if I don't like the default data type. I'm happy with this. I click Finish, and now the next thing I do, I've got my metadata showing along with the source data to show that they're together. I click Next, and at this point I add one or more data targets. The beauty of Field Shield is that you can have several data targets all created with, with the same pass through the data, but for different recipients. Some recipients might require some columns to be protected and others might have other protection needs, but in one pass through the data you can create several target outputs. In this case I will be going to a flat file output so I can show the results in a spreadsheet. And I'll make it CSV. But since I want a CSV file, the next thing I do is make the format CSV, which will create a header record in the output based on the field names in my target layout. Now that I have my target defined, I click Target Field Layout. And as you can see by default, it wants to include all the fields from the top which were found in the source data into my target, and I'm happy with that. This is the screen, the target field layout screen, where you can apply all the different protections afforded by the Field Shield product. First thing I'm going to do is take my Social Security number field and perform partial redaction. I go to the Field Shield icon. As you can see, these are the several categories of protections that are offered by Field Shield. Anything underneath the yellow Field Shield icon umbrella. Uh, in this case, um, I will be um, doing partial redaction with the masking category. I will be using a partial redaction mask, which basically, as the rollover tip shows, uh, the five characters um, will be um, redacted with an asterisk. That's fine. And as you can see, my field type now is showing in this column as a custom transform. Um, it's a masking function that's been applied to this. With respect to the um, email field, I'd like to do format-preserving encryption, which is 
reversi reversible. I'll be able to preserve my email format, but it will be encrypted values. So I'll go to my encryption and decryption screen, and as you can see, um, FieldShield offers encryption and decryption functions, hashing, encoding, and string functions, in addition to the others shown on the previous screen in the yellow shield icon. Um, in this case, I'm going to be doing format preserving encryption of alphanumeric characters, which is this routine right here. The passphrase, I can use a literal passphrase as long as I use that same passphrase when I decrypt to get my original values back. You can also browse for a, a file to, uh, which contains this passphrase if you want to keep it in a hidden directory somewhere. Exclude characters are if you have a particular character you want to exclude from conversion. Okay, that's fine. The next thing I want to do is take my date field and I would like to apply um, randomness to that. So I don't want the original dates. I would like to select from a, what's called a set file, which contains a range of, of valid dates, but not the original dates. So I browse for my set file, uh, which I will show you shortly. I'm keeping my set file in my set subdirectory. And that's going to select from a range of valid dates. Uh, this particular method is not reversible. And finally, I'm going to take the name field, and I'm going to perform pseudonymization, but a reversible style of pseudonymization where I use names that are exist elsewhere in the, the file, but they'll be scrambled. So my original name from the first column might be replaced by that which is in the 47th. Um, the second might contain the name from the 33rd column, but the beauty of this is it's reversible and you have realistic looking names in your output. So I, s I highlight the field in question, I click on the protection that I want, which in this case is pseudonymization, and I'm applying this option. Use the source data values to create a lookup table for recovery. Um, I'll put them the recovery file in the set directory, create a restore file, finish, um, OK. And then you just click finish, and you're done creating your job script, which can now be run, which will apply all the protections. As you can see, the random dates.set file is a range from 1950 through 2011 of valid dates. You can only receive valid dates back in that, and it will be a random selection from this range. These were the files created for the purposes of pseudonymization. The restore file is there for a subsequent job script where I might want to restore my original names. So. This is the job script that was created. There's a color-coded text editor with validation. Um, before I execute, I want to ensure that it's run with FieldShield and not CoSort, which I also have installed. This is my run configurations dialog. Okay. Now, to run something uh, with the IRI workbench, you simply you know, highlight anywhere inside the job script, and you click the green button and the console below shows that the job ran successfully and my output is this CSV file. I will open this with a spreadsheet utility and then I will compare the results with the original table. And I will once again go through everything that just occurred in that execution. Okay, the original table patient info. As you can see, um, the name column, John, Adams, Thomas, Jefferson, etc., these were replaced by other names that resided elsewhere in the table. They're realistic looking names, but the beauty of this method is in a subsequent pass through the data, I can restore the original names. I also, in the email um, column, applied format preserving encryption. So as you can see, the at sign and the dot were all preserved, but the values themselves are encrypted. Again, this is a reversible form of protection. I can apply the decryption counterpart to this in a subsequent job script. Um, we also have the social security number field, which I applied partial redaction to. As you can see, only the last four characters are displayed. This is not reversible. We also have the start date field. Um, 
the original values shown here were replaced by random values. Let me change the format uh, in this spreadsheet. Okay, as you can see, these were replaced by random values from that range for my random dates set file. Okay. So I have just demonstrated four protection methods, two of which were reversible, two of which were not, all applied in one pass through the data. And I could have um, applied one of those protection types to several columns at once. And that's the end of this demo.